It is just after a quarter to nine. The war in Gaza will go on until Hamas has been destroyed, the Israeli Prime Minister has said again in an Israeli TV interview. Benjamin Netanyahu is one of three Prime Ministers that Ami Ayalon worked with when he served as Chief of Israel's Domestic Security Service, Shin Bet. It was a role he came to as a highly decorated officer in Israel's armed forces. Five years ago, he wrote a book called Friendly Fire, How Israel Became Its Worst Enemy and Its Hope for the Future. And he joins us now in the studio. Morning, Mr. Well, Good morning. Can we start first of all with your view of the strategy on Gaza and this overall aim of destroying Hamas? Is it achievable? Uh, yes, but not the way Israelis or at least uh, our Prime Minister uh, is uh, see in his, in his mind. Uh, we have to understand that um, when we fight uh, Hamas, Hamas is a terror organization. And, uh, and he believed in the uh, theology of uh, radical Islam. And in this type of war, uh, we are fighting in two dimensions. One is uh, the battlefield. And in our case, uh, we are winning every, every battle. Uh, but we should not achieve victory in the battlefield because the other dimension, um, there is a place to achieve victory, is the war of ideas. And the only way to defeat an idea is to present a better idea. And in our case, is to present a political horizon for Israelis and for Palestinians. And I know it because the moment that Palestinians will believe in the end of occupation or in getting their freedom alongside Israel, they will not support Hamas. So Hamas had a great success until now because his popularity is rising. But the moment that Palestinians will see or will believe in a different horizon, which is their freedom, they will not support Hamas. And that horizon was there, wasn't it, when you first became the head of Shin Bet? You started in 1996, although Prime Minister Rabin had been assassinated. Right. I mean, when you worked at Shin Bet, Shin Bet has been part of enforcing the occupation, hasn't it? Yes. So did you believe in the occupation then? Well, um... I stopped believing in the occupation. It was a process uh, when I was relatively a young officer uh, during the first intifada. Uh, until then, uh, during almost 20 years, I used to believe that we are liberators. And, um, and only during the first intifada, it was a specific event in uh, one of the refugee camps, um, that I, um, I was attacked by a group of women and, and youngsters. And, uh, and they were not armed, but I see their eyes and I understood that in their eyes, I am not a liberator. So attacked, and this with, was, attacked with words. By, by stones, mean. stones. And I, I don't know, they had knives, but they, they, they couldn't reach me. So, um, and then I started, it was a long process. Finally, um, I, um, I was nominated by Shimon Peres. By the way, I refused to the same position by Rabin when he offered a year, year, year early, earlier. Uh, Shimon Peres offered me uh, this position the moment that I, um, I finished my career in the, in the, in the Navy. And, um, and the idea, he said, I want you to be the director because I know that you want to see the end of occupation. And this was the reason why he offered me this position. Because he knew of your views on it. Yes, and in my day, all what we did was um, to try to create a bridge. We cooperated with the Palestinians. We achieved uh, a high level of security. And, uh, and it was not only because what we did in the Israeli Shin Bet, it was because we cooperated with Jibril Rajoub and Mohammed Dahlan, and we understood that the only way to achieve security is by cooperation. So today, if you were in Prime Minister Netanyahu's position, if you were leading the government of Israel, what would you do? First of all, um, I, w I will announce that uh, we believe that the only future that will secure Israel and will enable us to maintain our identity as a Jewish democracy is the reality of two states. Second, I will say that we know how to fight, but we are looking the way to victory by diplomacy and a political achievements. And third, I will say, if we shall achieve a political agreement, we do not have any, 
any mandate in the West Bank and in Gaza. It is ours, but it is not only ours. And Palestinians are here in order to stay, and we are here in order to stay, so we have to divide this piece of land. But uh, dividing that piece of land, would that mean retaining the land on which Israeli settlers live and their numbers have grown no. considerably? No. That you'd have to, you'd pull out the settlers? Um, well, um, in my dream, I want to believe, and uh, it's not a dream, uh, I'm not naive, um, in the last talks um, between Abu Mazen and Ehud Olmert, mm-hmm. Ma- Mahmoud they, Abbas, yeah. they, and Mahmoud Abbas, uh, they had a subcommittee to discuss the future of settlers who wish or want to stay in Palestine, their status and the number, the figure. And I think that, you know, the best scenario is uh, we have a minority of Palestinians as Israeli citizens, and I want to believe that they will be able to see or to have a Jewish minority in Palestine. And... I couldn't believe that it is possible until the Al Jazeera um, papers were leaked. And then I understood that Abu Mazen, and Mahmoud Abbas and Ehud Olmert discussed it. Mm. Let me ask you about, bring you back to the to the present day and the reality right now, and particularly as a highly decorated Israeli veteran about the behavior of of, of Israeli forces, because we've been reporting this wounded Palestinian who was strapped to the front of, a, of an Israeli military vehicle in the West Bank. And there's also videos and pictures that have come out of Gaza of Israeli soldiers photographing themselves in Palestinian homes. We, um, we, we've had reports to the BBC about the treatment of detainees in Israeli military prisons, one doctor telling us about shackles and restraints and dehumanizing and the limited use of painkillers. What do you think is going on within the armed forces today? It is a war, and I've been in too many operations, too many campaigns, too many wars, and I know that in war, um, I don't have to read articles or books. We are losing our identity as human beings. And uh, I don't want to mention, uh, you know, the British or or the Americans, what they did in Afghanistan or in Iraq. Um, It happens in every war. And this this is a tragedy in our case, And this is why it is so important to end the war. Unless we shall end the war, we are losing our identity as human beings, we are losing our identity as democracy, and we are losing our security. Ami Ayalon, thank you very much for talking to us. And you also feature in The Gatekeepers, which is a documentary, a Storyville documentary, um, alongside other Israeli, former Israeli intelligence chiefs, and it's available on the iPlayer now.